How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is a map tour for a new-ish mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Offlim 22. And we're going to start with a description from the mod hub and it reads, Welcome to the idyllic Offlim in the middle of the beautiful Munsterland. Everything from an agricultural perspective is represented, from small to large machines. Everything can be used. The courtyards are arranged accordingly. There are small winding courtyards, but also large open courtyards. The landscape is rather flat with smaller hills and many ditches. 112 fields, 16 meadows, 5 agricultural businesses, 2 biogas plants, 1 contractor, 12 forest areas for forestry, custom textures, realistic stubble destruction, ditches with water holes fill up when it rains, perhaps or, or prepared for precision farming with its own soil map, seasonal map objects, one point of sale, animal dealer, pumps and hoses, DLC is required. And that right there is extremely important. Proceed no further if you do not have the pumps and hoses DLC with this map. It is required and I will point out the areas in which I noticed that is absolutely required. There is a change log to this. That's why I said it's a new-ish mod map. Uh, this is a release to consoles, first of all. But it says for change log 1.0.0.1, a new save game is required. New decorative trees. New decorative plants. New merchant building. New forest areas can be purchased individually. New get ride hall can be purchased dealer area expanded adjusted uneven floors pda revised and farms categorized field paths revised fence adapted to the wind farm farm id assigned problem solved adjusted road textures there are a lot of mods required for this map starting with the composite machine sheds by vertex design and niggles there's the placeable silos by dd mod passion Fuel Station by Vertex Design, Small Bunker Silo by Camelos0397, Old Farm Package by DMI20MM Normandy, and you know what, I'm just going to repeat several for DMI20MM Normandy, Old Cow Shed, Cow Shed 3 Plus 0, uh, Dutch Shed Pack by Raft Farmer and DMI20MM Normandy, The Cow Shed 3 Plus 3, uh, Dutch Contractors Shed by Dutch Modding Inc., Cow Shed Pack by DMI, uh, small Hall, or System Hall by User555, Dutch Pig Shed by Dutch Modding Inc., uh, Joan Porft, uh, Old Manure Heap Pack by Didac96, Pig Shed by DMI20MM Normandy, Big White Cow Barn by Rajo G Play, GDR Hall, uh, Grain Hall by RC3DJ, oh, I'm sorry, rc 3 d Place Hirsch Group, Whew. German Grain Hall by Taker LS in Normandy, Farm House Package Volume 2 by DMI 20MM Normandy, cow Old Cow Shed by DMI 20MM Normandy, Small Modular Bunker Silo Pack by Agrar Modding, Old Wood Shed by Mater, Mater uh, Feet GSI Flash, Silo Plate by RLSF Modding, VDI Large Storage Halls by Vertex Design, and Shelter by Nordfries. This map was created by Map Designing, yeah, Map Designing 01 and is 256.41 megabytes to download. If we take a look at the map, this is what it looks like. We start out here on the farm number one, as you can see, the yellow number one right there. It is farmland number 250. That is the only farmland that we own on this whole starting map. You do get a little key up here, by the way, uh, something we don't always see. So it does correspond to the various points of interest that we'll find on this map. Uh, now, unfortunately, the farm, 250 here, it's just the farm. You do not start out with a field, so make sure that you factor that in to your prices. Now, field prices do vary, and they're honestly, they're kind of weird. Um, so let's start out here to the west. 76,000, 71,000, that doesn't seem too bad, not too unreasonable, but this one here... 76,000 again, that one seems maybe around the same size as these two, maybe a little smaller. 95,000, this one doesn't look that much bigger than this one. You got 88,000, again, this one looks significantly better, bigger than these two, and it's not that much more expensive. 
Then you get up to 158,000. You start seeing the prices go way up. Look at that. This jumped up to 712,000 for this field here. I don't know why. 516,000, 757,000. I don't understand. I don't get it. I tried to figure this one out. Um, same thing kind of over here. We got $369,000 for this little itty bitty field here. This small one right here, $165,000. It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense to me why these are so expensive. Now, there are some that will be good for starting. Like this one, $3,000. This would be a good one for you to start out with because you got to buy your starting uh, plot of land. So, yeah, that's kind of a, kind of an odd oddity for this map. You're not able to purchase all areas on the map. You can see there are kind of the uh, periphery area here that is not purchasable. We do start out with animal barns and pastures. Contracts are available. Production chains, we don't start out with any, and collectibles are available, 100 to be precise. If we take a look at mods specific to this map, starting with this screen here, the uh, buy menu, we do have a card here for mods and DLCs, but that's just for the pumps and hoses. Again, I'm going to say this again, pumps and hoses is required. It is required. If you do not have it, you're going to be missing a lot of things on this map, so be prepared for that. Now, continue with the mod specific to this map. Under the build menu, we do not have anything under the buildings and sheds, nor do we have anything under silos, uh, silo extensions, or uh, containers. But under tools, if we scroll to the right, you'll see right here where it says the Offlum 22 mod at the very bottom there. That is a mod specific to this map. There is nothing under farmhouses. Now you will see all these other ones here for like the old farm package. These are the mods that are required for this map. They're not mods specific to this map. Only ones that are specific to this map are the one with the Offlum uh, 22 tagged underneath them. There is absolutely nothing under the production tab, nothing under animals tab. Under decorations though, if we take a look, nothing under fences, nothing under lights, but under others. We scroll over to the right and you'll see several uh, trees here that are specific to this map. Uh, if we go under landscaping and painting, we do get several additional painting swatches, quite a few painting swatches actually. Under trees, we do get several additional uh, additional trees, and under plants, we get quite a few additional plants, including uh, several uh, creating field textures, which is very, very nice. Now, because we start here at the starting farm, let's take a look at our starting equipment. Under our buy menu and own items, under small tractors, we have a Fent Favorite 515C, medium tractors, a John Deere 7810, harvesters, a Deutzfahr top liner 4090H, trailers, a Kloss Carrot 140TD, Header for the Deutzfar. Under Mulchers, we have the TMC Kinsella TMS2 300D. Under Plows, the Agrimass POV 5XL. Under Cultivators, the Horse Toronto 3FX. Under Cedars, the Nordstein HK25 and S3030. Sprayers, the Hardy Mega 1200L. Fertilizer spreaders, the Amazon ZATS 3200. Manure spreaders, the Branther TA1250 Power Spread Plus. Under slurry tanks, the FarmTech Polysys 1550. Under mowers, we have the K brand GMD 4411 and the Sep F240. Under tetters, we have the K brand GF8712. Under wind rowers, the Samaz Z2840H. Under forage wagons, the Poniger Faro 4010D. Under animals, the Silo King Trail Line 4.0 Premium 2218.22. Under levelers, the Dusseldorf F, uh, I'm sorry, the Dusseldorf MSS 3000. Under silo compaction, we have the Flegel Silage Roller. Under front loaders, we have the Quickie Q4M. Under front loader tools, we have the Alba Fork with Grapple and a header trailer for the Deutzfar header. And under weights, we have the John Deere Pickup 1500, 11, 11, 50, the pickup 900 and the 10 winkle fgb 600 so quite a bit of starting equipment now as we go around the starting farm what we're going to see as we go and progress throughout the rest of the map as well we're going to see a lot of these same barns and buildings that we have here at the starting farm that are going to be on the other uh 
farms as well. So I'm going to show off what we have here, and I'm not going to go into as much detail in the ladder farms. I will show them around. I will show where the barns and buildings are. I'm not going to show all the various inputs and outputs for all the other farms because a lot of them are going to repeat what you're going to see here. Uh, now, starting off here at the starting farm, behind me here, we have a sleep trigger. We have our one cow barn, room for 60 cows. Milk trigger is right here. Open this door here. Feed trigger, as well as our straw input with a blower right there. And if we go around the back side, we do get a little bit of storage tucked off to the side here. And in the back, right here, is our slurry output. Now, coming around here, and as you'll notice, as we go around this farm, as well as other farms, there is no... Um, markers on the map if we take a look on the map the map itself the farm looks very empty there's no highlights here there's no uh no indication that there was a cow barn that we even saw right there uh that's going to be pretty common around all these farms you're not going to see these little icons pop up as we go around so it's going to look relatively empty so just kind of a heads up and as you can see i'm standing on according to this a uh, bunker silo so if you take a look at the top left-hand corner, there's a bunker silo right underneath my feet. You should be able to actually use this uh, area for making silage. Now over here, we're going to come across the way right here. Repair trigger right in here. We have a liquid manure tank right here. Right here. We have another cow barn, room for 80 cows. We have our milk output here. We have our feed input and straw input right there. You can see a little symbol right there. And slurry output right here. Some more bunker silos right there. We have a pig barn right here, room for 170 pigs. Feed is in here and slurry output right there. We have another pig barn right next to it. 250 pigs can fit in this one. Feed here, slurry there. And that, uh, nope, did I show this one off? I don't think I showed this one off. I didn't, okay. This is another pig barn, 300 pigs here. And you saw the relevant triggers in the backside for feed and slurry. Feed here, slurry here. And that's it. That's basically the entirety of this farm. Now let's go ahead and, uh, let's see, where am I? This way. I want to go and grab the tractor right over here. Drop off the front loader right there, and now we'll make our way around. Now making a right from our main farm, we'll head in this direction to our first point of interest that's coming up here. You can actually see it right here to my left. Now, we're going to stop right here. Now, this is our first point of interest, but this is also our first problem that we come across on this map. So, take a look at the map. We started here on the main farm. We went around and saw the animal barns and everything that this particular farm has to offer. We then came down the road right over to here. Farmland number 251. We can purchase 251 for 97760 And we will do that. You can see this is now the grain mill. Now, the problem this gate anywhere that you see these gates i have yet to be able to figure out how to open any of these gates i've had to come through i've walked next to them i've looked up at the top left hand corner to see if maybe a pop-up comes up to shows me you know hey this is where where you can open it and do all that kind of stuff i have yet to figure it out cannot get it so effectively this point of interest this production point is useless you can't get to it you cannot get to it. But I'll show it off just, you know, in case 
you know, it comes to a time where they put out an update and they're able to get uh, get us into it. So managing the production point is right here. Input is here. And output right here. Now, if I get stuck behind some of these fences, I will warp to my tractor again to be able to get back to, you know, doing the tour. So just a kind of future FY as a just in case. So we're going to backtrack a little ways and head past our main starting farm. And just head down the road. Now coming up to this intersection up here, we're going to want to make a right. Now again, you got another one of those gates right there. At the main starting farm, I, I can't get any of them to open. Not a single one that is that design I have yet to be able to open. So coming up here, you will see a point of interest to my left. Now you can see it approaching here on the map. It's in between fields 46 and 47. The problem is there's nothing here. There is nothing here. Take a look at the map one more time. We were here at the grain mill. We came back out, down the road, and to here. And you can see water purchase. Well, that's fine, but there's there's nothing. There's nothing here. There's no indication that there's a water by point. Nothing. There's the ditches. There's these little, like, uh, creeks and, and uh, whatnot that would collect water. But... Nothing there that indicates that it's an actual sales point or a buy point for water. So I I don't know. And you're going to see kind of a reoccurring theme. There's going to be several aspects about this map that are needing to be updated. And so far we've found two of them. So heading down to the most southern part of the road network down here, we'll make a right. And coming up here, we are approaching the next farm. And the next farm, what, what I'm going to do is normally I number the farms in the order at which I come across them. For this map, because they're very clearly marked here on the map, I will call them by their actual corresponding number. So this being farm number six. We're pulling up here and you will see, again, one of these gates. Nothing I can do about opening them. So... We were at this little section down here, came down and around to farmland number 246 for farm number 6, 422560 to purchase. We'll go ahead and do that. You'll see a couple of items did pop up there. Now, again, can't open it. Nothing I can do. So, hop. Now, you will see also, you have barns and buildings that you have access to. They are supposed to be able to open the doors and all that stuff. If you find that you're not able to open them, you can see up the top left-hand corner, there's nothing that says open. Until I walk up to the doorway here, I can open the door, walk inside, and then if you take a look on the wall, there's turn on shed lights, but you also get the closed gate and open gate. And there you go. Now you can get in and out, so you have to be inside the buildings in order to access some of these. So if you're having issues getting in and out of some of these buildings, that's why. Find the door and then get inside. So, starting off... Uh, was it in here? Repair trigger, right here. Uh, let's see. Fuel tank, right over here. We have a seed for fertilizer, and you can see solid fertilizer, a silo for lime, and a silo for seeds. Now, turning around, that's it. That's basically everything for this particular farm, mainly just storage and for seeds. Uh, not seeds, but, you know, the essentials. Uh, jump, there we go. Now, coming up the road.
going through the roundabout here and then making a left. All right, so right here, directly in front of me is the LVE Sugar Beet cell. So this right here, I think this may be another issue, another broken portion, because this is very clearly a separate selling point right here. Now, let me just double check just to make sure because potatoes, LVE potato sale. Uh, can I tag place? Okay, so it's basically encompassing both of them and the same trigger. So that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, sugar beet sale. Okay, yes, yeah, so you can see it's encompassing both on the same trigger point. You might actually have to bring your potatoes over here. I'm not 100% certain about that, but that is what it is. So there's two cell points here, one for sugar beets, one for uh, potatoes. Right here, we have the animal dealer cell point. Beyond that, we have a manure buy point. Over here, we have the LVE wood chips cell. That is a sell point for your wood chips. And then here we have the country trading point LVE. Another sell point. Go ahead and hop back in the tractor. And now we follow this back out. And follow this around to our next point of interest, which is coming up in the distance here. You can actually see it right there. The biogas plant is directly in front of us. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier when it comes to needing the pumps and hoses DLC. If you do not have that installed or if you do not own it, you will not see any of these green domed buildings here. It would just be missing. So when I first did my tour, I didn't read the description. When I f was first kind of wandering around and kind of taking all my notes, I didn't, uh, I didn't read the description because I didn't read the description. Let me in. I will get... There we go. Got to do a little parkour to get up there. So anyways, because I didn't read the description, all this was missing. Nothing was here. So I had no idea why this was all blank and I also didn't realize why this was so expensive so we were here at farmland number uh, farm number six we went through the roundabout came around here had all these different sell points buy points and all this came back out here to this area here farmland number 244 for one million two hundred and fifty thousand is four hundred dollars you can purchase that and you can now see you get the various uh, production points that pop up here so over here we have a uh, liquid manure tank and then you have your actual biogas plant you got your production point right here and this is the little bit of a tricky one so if you're not familiar with the pumps and hoses this isn't just your normal biogas plant you have to kind of learn how to run these ones because it is a bit different than what you're used to seeing now you've got your input here for solids Bunker silos here. Got your liquid input here, as well as a liquid output for your uh, digestate. And you have another production point right here. So you've got two specific productions within this. So it's all kind of tied together as, uh, you, as your one kind of biogas plant. And they all just kind of feeds into one another. So again, if you're not familiar with the Pumps and Hoses DLCs and how the biogas plants work for the Pumps and Hoses DLCs, then you're going to have to familiar familiarize yourself with it because it is a bit different. Now I am going to just teleport there because no sense in trying to parkour. But yeah, I was incredibly confused when I came in here before reading the description there and not seeing the biogas plant here I didn't see the biogas plant at the other location as well so it was just one of those it was very odd trying to kind of figure out what was going on I just presumed because we're we experienced all the issues already 
uh, the two that I pointed out originally, I just presumed that these were just more issues that needed to be addressed. So we, we do have issues. There are things that are going to need to be addressed, but not as, not as bad as I originally thought. So coming up here, we have the next farm for purchase. This is going to be farm number two. Stop right here and go to the map. We were here at the biogas plant, came up the little side road, up and around to this area here. Farmland number 252 can be purchased for $2,401,280. Go ahead and do that. And now you can see we get the uh, liquid manure hold right over there. Over here. Gotta open this. Oh, I got it once before. There it is. Sheep barn right here for 15 sheep can be held. And our feed goes in here. And our output for the wool is, I believe, comes out either in this area here or in here. If I remember this mod correctly. Um, it's... A mod that I've seen in other places, but there is no clear indicator as to where that wool will pop out. Here we have a cow barn for 35 cows. We have another cow barn for 140 cows. A couple bunker silos right over here. Another cow barn. Right back here for 60 cows. Another cow barn for 80 cows. And that is everything at this particular farm. Now I will show off this little thing right over here. Again, just a, a liquid manure tank, slurry tank, for you to be able to hold additional slurry. Now, coming out to the main road. Make a left, and we'll follow this around to our next point of interest, which is a ways down the road. So as we continue to head north, the next point of interest is the next farm that we can purchase. And it's coming up here on the map. You'll see up here to the uh, up here to the north and is now approaching on the map there. So we'll pull up right to this little area right here. And we'll come to a stop. Now, if we take a look at the map, we were here at farm number two, came up to farm number three. Farmland number 253 for $2,467,200. Purchase that. And once again, you get a bunch of stuff that will be available to you, just not all showing up on the map. So bunker silo right here. We have a liquid manure tank right there. We have... Cow barn for 35 cows, a cow barn for 60 cows, another cow barn for 80 cows, bunker silos here, and if we can hop the fence, we have a little biogas plant right here. Again, we have a solid input here. We got our trigger for it right there. And our liquids go in here. And our uh, liquids output right there. Another trigger right there for the power plant. 
And that is everything for this particular area. Now let's go grab the tractor. We'll just hop over the fence right here. And now we head down the road a little ways further. There is a good amount of distance between all these various farms and points of interest, so it makes the map feel much larger than what it actually is. The road network really kind of does a good job on kind of wrapping around the entirety of the map. There's no real, like, direct paths to, to, to much around here at all. So you can see the next farm coming up into view. This is farm number four. And right here, we'll go ahead and stop. Take a look at the map. So we were here at farm number three, drove up to farm number four. Farmland number 247 for 4,603,520. Go ahead and purchase that. And now we wander around here. Let's get, oop, mate, there we go. Hop over, bunker silo right there. We have, let's see, we'll start on the other side over here. A cow barn here, room for 60 cows. I think it's, yeah, this is one of those buildings where you have to gain access to it from uh, the doorway. So you can see doorway right here. It opens up and you can wander inside. You go up to the little button there to open the gate and you're good to go. A manure heap right over here. Another cow barn. Oh, right there. 140 cows can fit in that one. Another cow barn right here. 200 cows in there. Liquid manure tank right there. Another cow barn. Room for 80. And that should be everything if I'm not mistaken. Uh, did we get this one? I think we did. Just double check. 200 in this one. Yeah, and that is everything for this farm. So now, head back to the tractor, see if I can hop over the fence. That's all right. So now we head down the road some more. Go around the winding, twisty road just a little bit. Now, is it me, or is this the old Nintendo 64 symbol right there in the middle of the road? Just looks familiar to me. Anyways, coming up here is our next point of interest. This is a behemoth biogas plant right here. The reason it's so big it's because it's also attached to this wind farm right here. So, we were here at farm number four, came down here to farmland number 248, 4,047,999. Can purchase this, and as you can see, the wind farm right here and all the various biogas right over here. So, let's go ahead, pull in here. Now we do have a manure separator right here, which that's really nice. Over here is the inputs for solids right there. You have a couple bunker silos right there. And that is everything around this area. So let's go ahead and hop back in the tractor. We'll pull a Yui. There 
go and head back in the other direction. Back towards that Nintendo 64 sign. Again, I could be wrong about that, but it just seems familiar. Now, coming up here. We're going to pull up to this driveway here and stop. This is farm number five. Now, we were here at the biogas plant, came back up and around over to this area. Farm number five, farmland number 249 for $4,760,960. Can purchase this. And now we see everything that this area has to offer. So, cow barn right here, room for 60 cows. Actually, it's uh, tucked inside here. Another cow barn for 40 cows. Liquid manure tank there. Coming around the back side over here. Another cow barn. Room for 80 cows. Walking around the back over here. Another cow barn. Room for 200 cows. Bunch of bunker silos right over here. And over here we have yet another biogas plant for your farm. Solid inputs are going right there. And that is everything for this farm. So now, head back to the tractor. Oh, wait, I forgot. Fuel tank right over here. Head back to the tractor, and we're going to take in the last couple of points of interest just down the road. So, you can actually see the little icon there in the distance, in the background there, off to the right. That is our next point of interest. That is is the animal dealer you can see it just coming into view right over there now if you want to purchase animals you can come to this location and purchase them directly from this icon here or you can purchase them using the same icon at any of the pens and pastures that you already own around the map if you utilize this icon or the pens and pastures icons directly you will incur an additional fee. That a fee is associated to a delivery fee. Essentially, the animal dealer here is taking the animals and delivering them for you at your expense. Now, if we take a look, it gets rather expensive. Depending on how many animals you need for adult cows, it's $100 per cow in addition to their base price. So if I were to buy 60 cows, it would cost me an additional $6,000 plus the $93,000 it would cost to buy just the base cows. So that adds up pretty quick, especially if you're buying a lot of animals. So in order to save that money, come to this location with an animal trailer. Load your animals directly into the animal trailer using this same icon, just making sure that it's parked in the parking area right where I'm standing. And then you're able to load into your animal trailer, take them over to your animal barns and deliver them yourself. You'll save that money. And again, it adds up pretty quickly. Now coming down the road, for our last point of interest, up here to my left, right here is the shop trigger. And that's it. That is everything for Offlum 22. Now it's time to render my opinion and let you know what I think. 0 to 5 rating as per usual. This one is going to score very low for me, unfortunately. There's number one, the color palette I think is fine. It, it's actually very, very nice. You don't get a lot of different colors, so it doesn't give you that kind of cartoonish look. I like that. The 
landscape I'm not a huge fan of. The kind of flatness with the occasional hills and waves in there is it's not very interesting to look at. It's very flat, very boring, and not much really kind of going on in that means. Now there's a lot of stuff going on for the map. You got the windmills, you got the trees, you got kind of the tall grass and all that stuff. All that's very nice, but it's just really not broken up. You don't you get too many of these kind of sight lines where you can kind of look off into the distance and really just see very very far distance and unfortunately you lose that kind of crispness the the kind of sharpness that the game can have that the game can have when it's in close range but after a certain distance it just kind of looks faded and just not as clean um then there's the errors the couple of errors there now i will say one thing that kind of leaves me hesitant the couple that we found already I've seen that there's the couple of barns and buildings that you have to be on the inside to access. I see these kind of markers here, which makes me wonder, is there a trigger, a repair trigger tucked away in here and I just can't open the door? With there being so many issues and stuff kind of labeled across the, the map here, it's just me speculating. I'm not going to hold that portion against them, but the portions where I have found issues in just my brief time on this map, I will kind of do that. Then you get these kind of little areas here where it's kind of the grass is encroaching on the roadways and stuff like that. It's just, there's a lot of things that just need to be polished. Then you're also talking about all the indicators that are missing from the map itself. All the little icons that are missing from the uh, farms and stuff. That's a big deal to me. For me personally, not knowing all the kind of points of interest that each and every farm has one makes my job more difficult but two it makes learning the map for an individual who's wanting to play it makes it just that much harder because they're having to then first go around and explore and really kind of put in like extra effort without being able to have that kind of guiding star that the map offers so it's just one of those that that's kind of a a frustration point for me personally i might not be for everybody but for me that's kind of an issue so yeah it's just one of those where i'm very disappointed in the map itself as a whole because i feel like outside of the kind of terrain and stuff i feel like a, there's a lot of things in this that's just kind of swinging for the fences but coming up empty so the use and the use and the actual necessity for the uh, pumps and hoses DLC and the utilization of the biogas plants from that pack is very concerning for me personally because they are unique in their operation. They're not just a normal biogas plant where you can just go in and kind of go at it. You, you're already starting the map with a very large learning curve so it takes out a lot of the kind of introductory for pe for anybody who wants to be able to come on and just play they they can't and if you don't own that dlc well then that basically blows the whole map out of the water because you don't have any area for biogas plant and you're just spending biogas plant money for not having the biogas available then you're having, you, you can build, you could build on that land and put a biogas plant in, sure, that's fine, but you're spending the money for the biogas plant with no biogas on it, and then you're spending the money for the biogas plant. So you're spending tons and tons and tons of money on just one function. So that kind of is concerning then because the biogas plants for the pumps and hoses do not operate in the same manner as the base game ones it's just it's gonna like for me it turns me off from wanting to play this map because of that because personally i'm not familiar with how the pumps and hoses biogas plants work and how to get them to operate at full capacity so it's just one of those you know kind of mm, again swinging for the fences and coming up short so yeah all in all what do i think of this map zero to five rating as per usual i'm going to give it in its current state knowing that there's issues that there's going to be updates and all this stuff i'm going to give it a one
I know a one. I feel that that's fair because there's a lot of issues, at least two of them that I'm aware of, and there are going to need to be updated. Uh, actually, three of them, considering that there's also all the issues with not having any of the icons on the map. And that one, again, that one's pretty big for me personally. Now, what, uh, what would I give this map if the icons were fixed and the map showed properly and all that kind of stuff and you were able to buy the field or buy the farms and then all the icons appeared all that stuff i'd probably give this a two i'm just i'm just personally not crazy about this map there's just something about it just isn't sitting right with me and for probably all the reasons i've stated before and just my own kind of personal feelings and preferences about this map it just something about it really strikes me as off as as well something else that i forgot to mention is all of the mods that are required for this map it is a ton of mods required for this map and it's just one of those that it's you know just eats up the resources eats up the extra space and then you have all these additional extra mods that you know are just gonna take up take up space so yeah, that's, that's just kind of how I feel about this map. I'm not, I'm just not crazy about it. But, like I say, for all maps that are just not my cup of tea, such as this one, regardless of how I feel about the map, I am glad that this map exists because I'm certain that there's going to be people out there who, even with the issues, even with, you know, all the things I've stated before, they're going to be like, no, Dave, you're crazy. You're wrong. I, I disagree. I love this map. This is great wonderful all that stuff and that's great that's fantastic that's the great thing about this game is it's to each their own so i am certainly glad and happy that this map exists it's just not my cup of tea but i hope that you enjoyed this map tour if you did please show me by liking sharing subscribing following commenting doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing the show to engage with this channel and enjoying the content and that being said hope you have a fantastic day take care